Kyrofornacharis unheimlich aktives Energiebündel. Es gibt auch andere Superstars, Sonic, die sich bewusst dran machen, zum Beispiel der Mark Knopfler und seine Dying Straits. Wie so ein der Knopfler zusammen mit drei alten Musikkollegen gemacht hat. Sie heißt Missing, Presumed, Having a Good Time und die Band nennt sich The Notting Hill Billies. Der Londoner Stadtteil Notting Hill Gate, bekannt für die Portobello Road und den Karneval. Vor allem ist das aber ein recht wohlhabendes Quartier. Mit Hillbilly hat Notting Hill eigentlich nichts zu tun, mit dem Mark Knopfler schon eher. Er wohnt da und in seinem eigenen privaten Studio ist die Platte aufgenommen worden. Innerhalb von zwei Jahren, ohne Stress und mehr Strategie. It's a great way to make a record at home that way because you've got so much time to be objective you can just come back and have a listen and say, oh God, I hate that thing, we'll get that out, we'll change that piano here. So it's a nice, there's no pressure, there's, you're, not, you're not paying a commercial studio. It's great having that situation at home. And the studio at home works fine. It, it, uh, the sound that we get there is great. I like it. I just like the way it all works. The door doesn't close. You get the telephone on tracks. The, the doorbell goes. You can hear it. I have to get it all off. But it's fun. Now I can talk to you, see it. I can talk to you at night. When it comes to love you. Neben dem Mark Knopfler und dem Dire Straits Keyboard der Guy Fletcher spielen da der Steve Phillips und der Brandon Crocker, zwei alte Musikerkollegen vom Knopfler. Ursprünglich hätte das eine Platte vom Steve Phillips und dem Brandon Crocker sollen werden, produziert von Mark Knopfler. But as things went on, we became a band by accident. I mean, I just pushed myself in, being unpleasant, and pushy and obnoxious, and I started playing guitars and started suggesting songs to do and. Um, Did they have a hard time in accepting you? No, they have to because I'm such a bully and so unpleasant. And uh, and and Guy Fletcher, the keyboard player, was my, one of my keyboard players was there. So he became a band member too, so honorary hillbilly immediately. And uh, it just went from one thing to the other. When the record was eventually done, uh, my manager took it to the Dire Straits record companies as a matter of uh, courtesy because because they handled us and said, well got it off and then first chance to release it and of course he took it to Warner Brothers in America and they said, well, what is this? Der Knopfler ist dafür bekannt, dass er im Studio sehr direkt mit den Leuten umgeht und nicht immer ganz ein einfacher ist. We've got tremendous respect for the music and for songs and a tremendous love for music. But that's a given and it doesn't get, it never gets to the point where, where It, it paralyzes you at all. You just, just get on and do it. It's pretty businesslike, in a sense. Um, you apply yourself to it with all the humility that you should, obviously. But we're certainly not, not, um, uh, we're not that way with one another. I think that the, the way that we actually, uh, that I like to work with my band and my crew is by, really by being rude and lots of insults and the crew and everything. It's all just a way of, of getting on. And they accept it. Der Rest sind Country Standards und weniger bekannte Fremdkompositionen, die sehr sorgfältig ausgewählt worden sind. Zum Beispiel auch der wunderschöne Song im Original von Charlie Rich. I got it not so long ago. A friend of mine sent me a, a tape of obscure rockabillies from Texas. And, but at the end of this tape, there's Charlie Rich singing this song on a piano. And it, in the end, he finishes this beautiful song, beautiful singing. And he finishes it and he says, and that's it. And I thought, oh, that's great, Dad. what a beautiful song. That Brendan should sing this, could do it this way, and rearrange it. Initially, I wanted to do it that gospel way, and I thought, no, it could, it could take a whole other arrangement. And Brendan came, I said, have you kept telling him? I said, okay, have you heard this song? It's, we should do it, you should sing it, we should definitely do it. And he was, came in with the song himself. He said, have you heard this song? And it was pretty much the same thing. But it's great when you come across a song that from the past that you've missed. It's just a great song and everybody loves it. It's a 
It's like finding a little gem and then bring it out and, and give it back to the world again. Everything I ever done was wrong And I feel like going home I'm not aiming for anything, I'm certainly not thinking of the music industry, never do. Not thinking of career, never do just music. It's just music that we like. We all like songs. Brendan and Steve and I know at least ten songs between us now, you know. So it's actually the problem with the album was really just deciding what, which way, because it could have gone any way at all. I mean, we could do an album of all our own songs, we could do an album. Mit Sultans of Swing hat für Die Straits vor zwölf Jahren alles angefangen. Der Song ist irgendwie mit der Musik von den Notting Hill Billies fest verwandt. Oh yeah, no, I wrote that initially on a national steel guitar and it had... It was just a completely different music. The music was completely different. And when I started playing the Fender Strat, that just changed it. Because, it, you know, a lot of music can be shaped even by the instrument that he happened to be playing. Mm -hmm. What does the guitar mean to you, Mark? Oh, boy. It's everything. You know, I, I, uh, I'm always finding that I'm getting a little bit better, which is great, and I enjoy playing very much. Um, I'm lazy with it. I don't practice as much as I should. Guitar keeps reminding you that you don't know anything about music. Music keeps you small. It makes you realize so, that you're never going to get anywhere near the bottom of it. Guitars are like people, you know, they have different voices. When you're recording, you, uh, the more recording you do, the more you think, ah, oh, yes, this is a job for that, this is a job for that. That's that big for that Gibson there and that one there. So they're, they're so different from each other. They're like people. That's a strange thing about guitars. You, guitars are strange. They, uh, you become a collector in a way out by default. You, you don't mean to be a collector, but you, they, they sort of come to you um, because you need different ones to do different things with. I'm actually going to have to get rid of some now because they're not being played. So your house might be full of guitars. Yeah, you end up with... Ein Titel aus dem bis jetzt letzten Dire Straits Album Brothers in Arms, wo die meist verkaufte CD und LP in der Geschichte von der britischen Plattenindustrie ist. Und jetzt, nach fünf Jahren Pause, soll es wieder etwas Neues von den Dire Straits geben. Yes, so we'll get together in September, October, but we'll have the record done by Christmas, I suppose, and then go out on a world tour. So I'll probably see you in three or four years' time, somewhere down the, on the tour, you know. It's a big cycle. So it's amazing you're starting that cycle again. Yeah, well, it's what you do. You can't really, you shouldn't really do anything that's not what you do. It's what you do. You just have to accept that's what you do. I like it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure you already wrote the songs you're going to record. Yes, yeah, some. Are mm -hmm. they sort of uh, influenced by the Notting Hill Beliefs? No, I've always been, I've been moving much more over to that way anyway. That just to, towards a more, even more juvenile, uh, adolescent, uh, simple-minded, um, ugly way of behaving. So I think uh, the songs will be like that more.